just four board members today. Um, Tuesday, January 14th. As information for our audience, if you're not satisfied with the decision made by the Metropolitan Board of Fair Commissioners today, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of cert with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of entry of the board's decision. To ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met, please be advised that you should contact your own independent legal counsel. The meeting is called to order. The first order of business is to review the minutes and approve them from December 10th. These have been circulated to the board. They're relatively short, uh, concise. Anybody uh, choose to make a motion? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, December 10th minutes are approved. Thank you. All right. We. Uh, have time for public comment at the beginning of every meeting. If anybody wishes to speak, uh, we'll grant three minutes at the podium. Anybody in the audience cares to speak? Yes, sir. Please identify yourself, if you would, with your address. Hi, my name is Bill McDonald. I'm a resident of uh, Nashville, Tennessee. I'm also the chairman of Region 3 of Bike Walk, Tennessee. Um, I just want to ensure that uh, access to history of bicycling at the National Fairgrounds continues. Uh, the Tennessee Bike Racing Association, Bike Walk Tennessee, and uh, the Harvard Bicycle Club typically uh, rent the track. Um, myself as Bike Walk Tennessee are in discussions with Scott Wallace of the track to uh, continue renting the track on a weekly basis on Wednesday evenings and want to continue that dialogue. We haven't finalized contracts uh, based on the uh, announcement made today, but I want to ensure that that uh, Thank you. Would you mind just explaining a little bit more about the mission of Harpeth and what y'all do? Because it's it's very noble. Oh, thank you. So um, I'm the. Is it okay? You just have to. Yeah, yeah. Go really close. Um, I'll pretend I'm a, uh, mus a musician. Uh, the Harpeth Bicycle Club is a, um, uh, a, a nonprofit volunteer organization that has been in existence for about 20 years now. Uh, one of the reasons why we rent the track is the Adaptive Athlete Program, which is blind um, cyclists who ride on tandem bicycles. They can only train at the track, and um, they um, train for a specific ride, the Harpeth River Ride, here each year. Um, there are also uh, many of those riders go on to perform in the Special Olympics, etc., and this is the perfect training ground for them. Uh, the Tennessee Bike Racing Association also rents the track for racing. Uh, many of these uh, cyclists go on to uh, national and um, global level championships. And so what we're trying to do in, in the past, we've only rented it for a short amount of time, and what we're trying to do is secure a contract for every Wednesday night that's available that's not conflicting with race nights uh, for the year. Uh, so between Harpeth Bicycle Club, Bike Walk Tennessee, which is an umbrella organization for bicycle advocacy, and Tennessee Bike Racing Association, we want to continue this partnership and make sure that uh, we have access to the track on Wednesday evenings. How many weeks have you typically been out here on Wednesdays? Uh, so in the past, it's been much higher. Um, the attendance has dropped because the Harvard Bicycle Club, as a nonprofit organization, they didn't have the funding to fund it every week. And so there was also always a call for um, rain, weather, etc. What we're trying to do is just make it a consistent Wednesday night because a lot of people would see they wouldn't know if the track was open or not open. So the attendance would drop to sometimes 20. We've seen up to 200. Um, the Tennessee Bike Racing Association and the races that happen during the summer are um, typically several hundred um, participants and then another 100, 200 um, spectators as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment at this time? Okay, if not, we will move on to our monthly reports. Uh, we'll start with 
Felicia Bowman with the financial report. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I will be reporting um, several things this morning, but starting off with our financials for the period ending November 30th, 2019. Revenue um, through that period, $1,341,292. Expenditures, $1,296,619 for a net gain of 44673 Depreciation for that period, 60210 The breakdown in expenditures, um, Payroll, 610193 Utilities, 241715 Purchase services, 58880 Supplies, 54899 Communication, 10361 Temporary services, 57576 Security services, 59863 IT services, 49,381, and insurance permits and low cap, 153,751, which brings the grand total of the $1,296,619 in expenses uh, for the period ending November 30th, 2019. The board will also notice that the attachment uh, for this includes a monthly breakdown. I uh, want to say thank you to our budget analyst, Richie Swiger, for updating us when new reports are ready and available for us. Um, it gives us a monthly breakdown. Um, it may not be in the, the category or the report may not look like what we're used to, but it is allowing us to see the monthly breakdown each month. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, any questions on the financials for November 30th? Um, the other thing that you have in your packet is um, a copy of uh, the combined statement of net position from the CAFR for the year um, that just ended 2019. I wanted to put this copy in there to um, show you um, on page D4 under unrestricted funds, um, our fund balance where we ended. Um, in our meeting in September, um, we thought uh, we were at $4,518 in the black um, after all of the year-end adjustments and um, corrections, uh, we ended $2,634. So I, I told the board that I would let you know once the um, numbers were final and audited where we ended up. So our fund balance for um, the end of the fiscal year, $2,634. So... That's great considering being hundreds of thousands in the red prior months that we ended in the black for the end of the year. That's great. Um, any questions on that? Um, the one last thing I want to mention is that it is budget time. Our budget, um, we were notified um, last week when we had um, budget meetings that our budget is due on the 24th of January. So we're in a mad dash to get that completed and into um, um, finance uh, for the fiscal year 2021. So we will be working very hard on that this week and first part of next week. Um, we are also working to get a number to the director's office um, with regards to um, year-end projections. So we're six months in. Um, we're projecting um, where we will end up um, at the end of this fiscal year. So that report um, is due on February 1st. So we're working very hard to get those numbers in to finance as well. 
we will keep the board abreast of um, all the reports that we turn in and what our projections are going to be for year end. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next uh, executive director's report. Um, I have two items. Um, one, I just want to report on a, uh, a contract issue that we have been result working with um, Metro Legal and the state of Tennessee on a contract item. Um, to make this as, as brief as possible, um, when we executed our contract with our food and beverage provider, D&D, &D, um, they went and got an update on their licensing for the year and the, t uh, the state indicated that we did not, as a municipality, have the authority to collect revenue on beer and alcohol sales. There's a prohibition against that. So we have since amended the contract to remove any references from us receiving that revenue. We are working with uh, the mayor's office and Metro Legal in the state right now to see if we can get that uh, prohibition uh, lifted uh, and so we can receive the revenue that we anticipated. Needless to say, this is going to impact our commission on food and beverage moving forward. Um, we're still evaluating what that impact is going to be. Uh, it, it's not going to be, you know, 50% of our food and beverage because a lot of our events um, are not, do not have a lot of, you know, beer and alcohol sales. But this is a similar issue that um, was resolved when Ascend opened. Um, again, as a municipality, we can't hold a liquor license and we can't use a third party to earn revenue from alcohol sales on our behalf. So that is the, the legislation that we're working on now. Um, eventually, once that is proceeds through the state, we will be coming back to this board to ask for um, your authorization and support of their efforts to, you know, uh, change the, the law to give us that ability to collect revenue. So may, potentially in the next month or two, you'll see a resolution um, presented to you for endorsement of that effort. Second thing, um, we are 30 days out um, with the uh, contract termination for the Speedway. Um, I, I see Claire here. We'll be sending a follow-up letter just to try to confirm um, a walkthrough uh, next month on the 10th prior to uh, vacation of the premises. Um, I do hope to sit down with them to discuss um, you know, payments and see how we can, you know, continue to work towards, um, you know, receiving any revenue that we can from the, the outstanding payments. Okay. And the status from December 31st? Payments received? Oh, uh, no payment. Right. Okay. Do you have further um, info in your report? No, that'll do it. Anybody have a qu questions? Okay. All right, we'll move on to Fairgrounds Improvement Project update. Good morning. Good morning, board. Ed had a prior engagement that he was unable to reschedule, so um, I'm filling in for him. Uh, I'll start things off with the Expo Center. Um, we've had a little movement um, since our last board meeting in December um, from a budgetary standpoint, um, but we've re we've re we, uh, the budget remains um, intact, and uh, we're continuing to um, close out um, to 
to work on closeout and finishing um, those last couple items at the Expo Center. Um, we're also continuing um, to hold uh, those line items for the multi-purpose building. Um, as for the demolition, uh, the budget continues to hold at $1.8 million. Um, no money has been st spent to, de to date. Um, however, we um, do have a couple pieces in the pipeline to begin addressing some of the utilities on top of the hill um, in addition to some of the pole removals. Um, so you some will, of the what? Um, some of the NES pole removal. Okay. Um, so that should happen within the next couple weeks. Um, and then lastly with uh, Fair Park, we have um, the remaining funds um, for Fair Park will go towards the demolition of the Election Commission building um, towards, the ends of, towards the end of last week. Um, they started that move out of that building um, and the abatement is the next item on that list um, followed by the demolition um, and that will that will happen within the next couple weeks also. So it, is the equipment out or it's? Yes. The equipment is out. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb's not even here. What, what? Mr. Ever's not here. What I'm the not heck? <laughs> um, all right, well that's, that, that's something we've talked about for 10 years. <laughs> that's a big day, thank you. Yep, thank you. Good morning. How's everybody doing? We're fine. Thank um, you. Really, Connell just kind of filled everybody in. Michelle, just, yes. you got to talk really close. Sorry. Hello. And loud. And loud. Can you all hear me? Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Sorry. I need more coffee, apparently. <laughs> um, uh, Connell mentioned everything um, that, that's really going on. So the expo building, we are just finalizing a few punch list items, a few outliers. Um, and those are actually set to finish uh, this month. So we expect to finish our punch list. and. Those few outlier um, items, uh, you know, a couple of permitting things that we are just checking off those boxes, making sure we're hitting everything. Uh, that should finish this month. So there'll be a little bit of movement, as Connell said, but really we're pretty close to being done. Um, thank you. Can you all hear me? Okay, thank you. Uh, let me move this down a little bit. Fair Park Phase 1B, which is what we've been calling that, uh, that is um, the Election Commission building. So, yes, it's the machines moved out last week, as Connell mentioned. and um, We'll have to send Caleb a message and let him know because I know he'll be excited to hear that. But that work is set to begin uh, in the next week or so. They're doing work plans and prepping right now, prepping the site right now for abatement and demo. So you'll see activity happening later this month, um, possibly as soon as next week. Uh, and then, of course, just as he said, the demo on the site, right now it's just minor items like utilities, um, making sure that, you know, um, we've kind of had to cut power and cut water so we're not having to continue um, servicing those buildings that are unused. So a lot of that was just to make sure that, um, you know, all of the money was being spent wisely. So, and then at this point we're waiting for administration review and, and um, move ahead. So that's kind of where we stand. Do you all have any questions about Expo or Fair Park or anything? So the, uh, the, the building where the election equipment was, mm -hmm. Um, is there going to be a pavilion there, or is it just going to be a pavilion and some parking? There, there actually already is a pavilion there. Um, that was part, done as part of the phase, the first phase. Um, so really what's going to happen there is just a little bit of grading work. Remember, that's in the flood way. So there's a little bit of grading work to finish that, and then you'll, we'll go back with seed and straw. And, um, you know, there's, there are plans for parking um, on that site if needed. It's, it's a small site for that. So it'll be a continuation of the park. Thank you. Okay. I have actually one quick question. Um, Fair Park Phase 2, has there been any word about Phase 2's funding? And Because and, I know we're still on a ticking clock to get that done with our um, approval rate related to water services, right? That's right. That was a five-year variance. Um, we had five years to complete that. I believe that five years is up in May of 2022, I think is when that is. Okay. Um, and so at this time, no, I've, we've not heard any news on funding for phase two. Okay. 
You know I have to say something. Uh, and that is in the capital improvement budget. It did make it in the capital improvement budget, yeah, right? So yeah. That phase of it hasn't There's been funded yet, but it's in the process. Okay. Um, next on the agenda is MLS stadium update. Really not much to report. Uh, it's there's continuing discussions going on. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, anybody? Thank you. All right, so next is the contract with Formosa Productions. I guess I kind of jumped the gun and pretty much said what I was going to say in um, my report earlier. Uh, again, just expressing our desire to sit down um, and have some thoughtful conversations about um, past due payments and how we can get that resolved together. Okay. Thank you. All right, any uh, new business? We have uh, introduction of Bob Sargent with Track Enterprises. Yes, I just wanted to um, stop and introduce myself. I've not been to one of the meetings. We are um, the new promoter, I guess, to say. We've been having a lot of work ahead of us to do the car race track and um, working with D&D &D events and Scott Menlin here also. So, again, I just want to introduce myself, maybe take some questions, or I could start by giving you a little um, update on what we've done so far and what we plan on doing maybe. Is that how you'd like to proceed? So our plan is to do the um, what we've done in the past seem like the um, s seven to ten race schedule um, with mixed in with um, uh, three what we would call special events and then local racing um, for the other six to seven and um, you know basically do a lot of uh, what's happened in the past as far as car racing we are aware of some issues and um, gonna address all of those that we can. Again, we've kind of been thrown at this very quickly. We did have a driver's meeting um, last Sunday and it was very well attended and positive um, outlook from everyone involved. So that was good. Um, other than that, again, we're gonna try to work with the community, the neighborhood and, and so on and so forth. A little background on myself. We've done the ARCA race here for the last five years. So this will be our sixth year working with the fair board, the staff here. Um, in the community. So we've got a little bit of background here in Nashville and our company, Track Enterprises, has been in business since 80, 1985 to 26 other racetracks, about 80 events a year in 14 different states. So a little bit of background on us. Any questions or anything we could update? Yes, ma'am. It's nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. Um, I just was wondering if you could expound upon your plans to engage the community. Well, we... Again, we're still learning and, uh, you know, everyone, the issues, one issue we hear is um, uh, curfew, one issue we hear is mufflers, one er issue we hear is um, practice dates. So things of that nature we will address from the operations standpoint. And then some other things in the community that we like to do at other racetracks, what I meant would be charities, um, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, things of that nature. So that's what I meant by community involvement. And again, those three issues I brought up, we're, we're probably well aware that there may be some, some other ones, but those seem to be at the top of the list right now. Uh, just as a follow-up to, to Bob's response, we are working with Councilman Sledge to, um, to recruit new members for the Neighborhood Impact Advisory Committee. This was something that was formed um, quite a while ago to it originally for the speedway but it's really evolved into all things that the fairgrounds does so we had um, a member resign last year and so we're looking at a way to kind of reinvigorate that group and expand it a little bit and so he's offered his assistance in recruiting some new members so we'll continue with those meetings I have a question about that group sorry um, is it mostly Wedgwood Houston, or is it exclusively Wedgwood Houston, or are there other surrounding? Um, originally had Wedgwood Houston, I don't know, um, Donna Crawford was, when she dropped, they never replaced her. So right. So I don't know if you can borrow my name. Or 
Jason, I've did had, you I've had have conversations yeah. with Councilman Sledge about trying to trying to make sure that group gets expanded, and I, you know, I know he's he's working on that. You know, I mean, I, this is a little bit of a aside from our conversation, with Mr. Sergeant, but I mean, you know, we, we do need we should talk about the fact that there, there were resignations out of frustration, um, especially after the uh, Outer Lands Festival or whatever concert of the park. So we, we should have a, we should probably make that agenda item to talk about that that that, the, that we lost some longtime NIAC members out of frustration and had nothing to do with uh, uh, Mr. Sergeant. So I don't want to. We should we should right. we should keep focused on that. We can talk about that after. But I think it's going to be vital to have NIAC. Um, I will say on this topic, I had a call with Mr. Sergeant and Laura last week to kind of talk about some initial things, um, and I, I have to say, in about our 35-minute conversation, we had a more productive. Uh, sort of progressive set of discussions about mufflers and other items than I've had in any discussions. Um, I had two hour-long meetings with SMI last year where they didn't want to talk about anything, and they avoided talking about anything substantive. So it was really a refreshing contrast uh, for an initial discussion with Mr. Sargent, I have to say. You know, after all the financial issues we had with, our, with, with last season and the nonsense and shenanigans with SMI and their lobbyists. Hopefully, we're moving on from all that, and I'm really hopeful that we can have, um, you know, a good season. And I, I so I'll, I'll back up Mr. Sargent's comments. We had a really good initial talk, and I think we're gonna have some more discussions about some of those neighborhood uh, concerns. But it was it was a really uh, encouraging, promising start. Yeah, there's so many neighborhoods beyond that that. Uh could be involved, so we'll talk about that later. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, what kind of special events? You talked about maybe three special events. What, what are you thinking about? Car racing. It'll be very similar. Um, again, the last five years we've done this ARCA race in right. May, and then the All-American 400, which they've done for 30, whatever, how many years, will be in the fall, and then we're going to add one on July 18th, another stock car race. Okay. All right, so you weren't thinking about like music festivals or any sorts of other types of entertainment? Um, no, we have not even approached that at all. Not saying that we wouldn't someday come and ask, but no, that's not on our horizon at all. Um, we'll probably let somebody else do that. I mean, there's some other things that may get brought up. Probably you, you use one that I can say no, music festival, but there, there could always be something come up, whether it be a car show or something that we would come talk about. But right now what we are focused on is our, um, again, um, seven to ten car races. Uh, I think I think that's so it. So we're Fun. working on finishing up a phone number for the Speedway, a website, Facebook, all that. That'll be done very quickly. We'll try to transfer all that to you guys so you're aware of it. Um, the Randy and Scott will be right here on property seven days a week, so we'll be able to communicate through them. And then I'll make sure my email and cell phone is readily accessible to you guys, to everyone also. Feel free. We kind of like to keep an open line of communication. So if, if issues do arise, we would like to get taken care of very quickly. Um, I'm not here to guarantee everything's going to be perfect, but we, I am here to guarantee we're going to work very hard to make sure as close as we can get. Thank okay. you very much. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Anybody else have uh, new business? I do. Ha I have one thing to run up the flagpole. Um, oftentimes we have a special meeting or a meeting gets pushed for one reason or another and we have a tendency to uh, schedule it at 9 o'clock. Um, I mean these meetings have been at 8 o'clock, kind of inherited that time frame, but does anybody have any thoughts? And we can um, vote on this at a future meeting or whatever, but I just wanted to get some feedback if we move the meeting to nine. I like eight. Oh, eight, eight. eight. <laughs> eight. Fine with me. Okay, eight's fine. All right. I think it's better for I think it's better for public engagement. You can come eight. in before work and yeah, nine okay. so people start have to get to jobs and stuff like that. Okay. Some of us included. Makes sense. It's easy for uh, Jason and I to get here. We're Okay. All right. Anybody else have anything for future uh, meetings, or do we have a motion to adjourn? Move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everyone.
This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.